Hmm. Oh, hey, folks. Welcome to Affiliate Nerd Out. I am your moderator, or nerderator, Dustin House. Spread that good word about affiliate marketing. And I am in the Nerdatorium with my friend Alicia. Welcome to the Nerdatorium. All right. We're here to do this. I'm excited. How are you doing today? Oh, smashing it. We're we're happy and uh, workflow is, is doing well. We're making some new content here. I'm excited. I can't believe you took the time out of your day at a conference to come and do this. This is so generous of you. I really appreciate you. Thank you. My pleasure. I had such a good time meeting you in Miami. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to share, you know, my love for paper call uh, with everybody else. Fantastic. And you're uh, you're one of those unique opportunities that I've run into in my life. I don't necessarily we don't have any overlap necessarily in like our industry, but uh, we had a friend of a friend that acquainted us. Every conference I go to, I make uh, 10 new acquaintances and one really good friend uh from an old acquaintance and i like made an exception like building you like you jump jump the acquaintance part and into like that friend zone like very quickly and uh i just love your energy and so glad you could be here today thank you so much i feel the same about you awesome awesome all right if you have anything to ask me or alicia here uh jump in feel free to drop any questions in the chat here um, if you would like to be in her seat, come be my guest. Go to DustinHouse.com slash nerd and put in a topic of discussion that you'd like to hang out about. And then uh, what products work well with pay per call? This is a, a question of the day for the folks out there in the chat. Please drop it in the chat. And while I put that in the chat, Alicia, who are you? Um, my name is Alicia Aflalo. Um, I own a company called Go Referral Agent. Um, I have a paper call network and I also consult for other uh, paper call networks, paths that do phones, um, that do calls, inbounds, as well as surveys um, and other affiliates as well. And I'm, I'm a big connector in our space. I, I see that you are well connected to people that I know and I don't do anything in the pay per call arena, but people seem to like you. So I'm on board with it. And speaking of people that I like, Sean Hall, the one that, that connected us and we had a fabulous dinner in Miami. What's up, Sean? Thanks for joining us today, bud. Hey, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, Tell us about what you do, your operations business consultant. I want to know what this is, what you're doing, and who you're serving out there. Great. So I service a, a couple of companies um, right now. And as an operations business consultant, it really depends on, on the need. So I, when I come into companies, I assess you know what's going on and what is working well for you already, what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, one company, I have an appointment setter working to put appointments, you know, on a calendar, right. I could be, do something, you know, as specific as that, you know, it was assessing the need, reducing cost. So I love doing that. In other cases, I'm helping monetize sunken media costs hmm. in a compliant way. So for example, um, you're opting in for health insurance but you also may um, be eligible to go to another campaign like tort, like Camp Lejeune or um, hair or talcum. Um, we work through with the data and the opt-in um, and get a compliant way for you to remonetize that sunken media cost. So I love repurposing data is another way to do it, both whether it's on the phone or online, um, it, it just being effective inside of other people's businesses, um, it's magical and um, and it's inspiring and everybody's just ready to go and to, to make that happen. So calls are powerful, um, data is powerful, and everybody you know wants to save money or remonetize what they already have. 
And those are things that I do as an operations business consultant. Okay, awesome. And uh, looks like we have a fan in here. I'm not going to comics. That's uh, amazing. Watching from Zambia, affiliate manager in the affiliate market. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. All right. And you talked about working with clients and now is this only in the paper call space or is this beyond? Are you doing other marketing functionalities? So um, also in the so one to one consent is a big topic right now. So I'm I'm helping and on one of my contracts working with the one to one consent. It's a hot topic at the conference I'm um, you know streaming live from today. Um, you know, getting one to one uh, consent um, where there's an e sign. So um, working with clients, my process really is first discovery. Okay, a lot of listening. And yeah. to to truly get a deep dive and understand the need, and uh, so that's that's the first process. Um, then, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Then, second, um, after discovery, it's you know kind of making priorities of you know the person who hired hired me um and saying you know what what do you want to tackle first yeah and then going through that writing up uh you know a framework and then moving forward right so working with consulting clients is different than paper call paper call is much faster it's you know here's the offer um do you have traffic yes mm -hmm. or no and it's a very mechanical process it's really easy it's buying and selling um just like you do in paper click or um, you know, in uh, e-com, all that stuff, it's it's much easier. It's more transactional. Whereas working with my consulting clients, it it's it feels um, it feels really good because you get to see their results and you get to kind of win with them, like kind of like your mom and dad is rooting you on on the on the sidelines. You're you're that mom or dad with that client rooting your client on. Yeah, um, Sounds like your mom and dad are texting you right now as, <laughs> as they root for you. Um, you bring up a good point about listening to the clientele. And I, I feel like I get lost in not doing this enough early on. And I get a hold of a, a program. I've got big ideas uh, on what they should do to improve or like, uh, you know, clean up the program altogether. And, and I, I don't listen enough to like what their real needs and concerns are. Uh, before I jump in feet first, but great, great point. So uh, our topic of the day here is the paper call affiliate programs. And let's just start off with something super simple. What is paper call? And are there any other names that it is known by out there? Um, gosh, uh, so what is paper call? Paper call um, has been around for a long time. And paper call is when you actually pay for a call, either um, we have raw calls, which is just for the call coming in. Okay. Um, so you're paying for the actual individual call. There's a duration, right? So the call comes in, let's say off of a Google ad, for example. Yep. Uh, so put out an ad for Google, somebody clicks and their phone dials the advertiser. Um, and then when the call hits, um, five seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, sometimes even as high as 240 seconds, those duration times are when the publisher or Google gets paid out, right? Exactly. So we optimize towards when that payout is. You can also do paper call on a CPA when a sale happens. And that's more for, for national campaigns. But paper call is an awesome way to get quality leads um that are calls beautiful all right and then what type of companies are those that can benefit from a paper call because I, I figured you know with a physical good you're not going to have a, a real need for it but with the software as a service you you might have a, a big need for it so tell us what what companies work best with paper call 
So the qualifiers really are, so, I mean, I can answer the question more directly with like insurance companies, um, maybe even maybe even furniture companies, but the cost of the product or service, and it's most of the time as a service, should be at least a thousand dollars lifetime value, right? Mm -hmm. So your customer for pay per call marketing, if you're going, if that's you know what you're going to invest in, because okay. it is an investment in your company and your yeah. your product and your team, pay per call should be invested when you have a large geo footprint. So it's statewide, uh, countrywide, mm -hmm. countrywide. You're going to get you know better results with. You need a big state footprint. It's at least a thousand to fifteen closer to $1,500 lifetime value of your customer. Okay. And that should be like one year of the, you know, the value of your customer. So insurance, if it's a hundred bucks a month, it, you know, it kind of falls in the, in the realm of, you know, a thousand to $1,500. So those types of companies where their products and services are at that threshold, I find are ideal uh, to, to use paper call. Okay. And any verticals and niches, you, you, you made that like price point of lifetime value of the customer. What, what verticals are really popping off with this? So legal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so motor vehicle accidents, mm -hmm. social security, disability, tort. Um, so if you are eligible to receive compensation, um, that's over a thousand dollars, right? Value to the attorney. Hmm. So legal is an optimal uh, place. There are many ver verticals that are optimal. Also insurance um, is very big. There are many verticals I practice within, you know, I focus my attention on legal and insurance. Um, you know, based on my experience, I focus hmm. there, but there's home services. So sometimes the lifetime value of the customers, my rules of a campaign don't always apply. It's a lower, um, it's a lower cost per call, okay. um, sometimes for home services, but if somebody aggregates a bunch of home services, buyers, like a plumber or, mm -hmm. um, a roofer, or that's the home services does pretty well in paper call as well. But there's, there's a lot of vertical and it falls along the same lines as a regular digital campaign. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, I got a, a question here. I'm not sure how to answer it, but maybe you can. How do with some consultants who claim for payment before getting the actual information or traffic source provided? How do do with some consultants who claims for payment getting the actual information or traffic source? Yeah, I, I can't figure it out there, comics. Uh, give it yeah, another try. We're happy to answer here. Yeah. Um, all right, moving along in the process of um, types of companies. And then what about platforms? I, I assume you have a favorite tech stack for this kind of program. What, what does that look like? Well, I love all my service providers. Um, that's first I want to say that. <laughs> um, my tech stack, um, I use Ringba. Okay. Um, I use TrackDrive. Right, both are amazing companies. I am going to be adding Retriever to the mix as well. Okay. Um, the big thing with the tech stack is one, um, the uptime. Two, well, that's probably it's a close second. Or actually, the the one goes to the service. This is your point of sale system, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're an advertiser or a network um, or a traffic provider, a publisher as well. Um, your uh, your call system is your point of sale system. So it is extremely important that the service on this system and the knowledge base that a system has is not only excellent, but they are forward thinking um, because there are all of these um, FCC, FTC um, right. things that you have to know about. So these, all of these companies are fast forward and doing things to help us you know, keep going and keep things really moving in paper call. So those are the the tech stack I use in paper call. And then the integrations, the other systems like Everflow, um, mm -hmm. Convoso has a, a nice platform. Finexa um, is an amazing team with great resources. So um, 
the one, these are the ones I use and I'm just familiar with them, but there mm -hmm. are so many great solutions out there. It's just finding the one that works for you and one that has excellent support because it's your point of sale system. Oh, for sure. Great, great name drops out there. Uh, Finexo was a, uh, awesome sponsor, uh, love Everflow and everything they're doing over there. Um, so going into like a budget what does that look like for a brand what should they be setting aside if they decide pay per call is a way to go so if they want to test out pay per call um really you should have a minimum of five thousand dollars right i'll test at, at yeah. lower rates uh based it really depends but at least five thousand dollars is a good test a really good test is about 10k okay but more moderately, anywhere between two and five thousand, similar again to email or Google or any other paid marketing source, you want to set aside um, uh, at least five grand for uh, for pay per call marketing. Okay, and is that per like uh, I don't know affiliate partner? Um, what what do you want to call that? Or is that like the overall like? tech stack included like fees and everything getting in the door for 5,000. Oh, okay. So that's a, that's a bigger question. Okay. Um, so tech stack, your provider actually can, you know, um, provides that the, it really depends on how many agents you have, right? Okay. So if you're, if you're an attorney and you have your own intake center, Mm -hmm. of you know, four or five agents, right? You got to consider yeah. that cost. And then um, and your marketing budget, you have to have a decent marketing budget, right? Okay. For, to feed those agents. So it really depends on um, your, your intake or how you're receiving and then monetizing those okay. calls. Gotcha. Um, so would you use that five to 10K budget on just one partner or would you diversify across multiple? Uh, 5k in in legal it would be a minimum of 5k per partner okay. in other verticals it's 2k in like insurance um about 2k is a good test um and again it, it varies depending on the vertical but right. but definitely 5k in legal per partner all right all right so let's talk about the campaigns itself what does an ideal campaign look like for a company well on my side of the 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 uh the ideal campaign it's a campaign that runs 24 7. um it is a campaign that has a great footprint okay and the prompt payment from your advertiser is is the best communication but not just the prompt payment it's the dispositions it's the feedback um comes in real time and i have some partners with great tech stacks that can return dispositions either within 24 hours um some have done it in real time uh wow. but feedback is a major part of an ideal campaign where it's seamless and the communication is seamless so the campaign can be optimized gotcha and the tracking for each one of these they're they're going to be, it's going to be a little bit of a different bag for uh, whether it's a qualified call or a non-qualified call, I would assume. So how do you delineate like what you're going to pay for each one of those campaigns? Um, so the, the campaigns are kind of backed into by a, a cost per acquisition in a lot of them. Okay. The quality calls, um, so paper quality call came, is now active in the legal space and it's almost a retainer it's almost a sale and they call it you know quality so um in some cases a quality call is an insurance you're getting a call for insurance on an insurance line not a call uh, a caller calling in for tires right so you okay. want to call with your target market right and yeah. it happens with google um, the anomalies that advertisers learn if they employ Google themselves um, for quality wise is that people call in and they say, and I quote, stop calling me. And they've picked up the phone and they're making an inbound call. And this actually happens. So I want to destroy the myths of like, you know, everybody's, you know, awful in this. Space. They are not. People, there's something happened in COVID where people just forgot that. 
they picked up the phone and made calls. So we you get wow. some claims in there, but the tech stack shows where the origination point came from, right? Yeah. Whether it's Google, Google Display, stuff like that. But back to quality calls. Um, for attorneys, it's something very specific. They meet X, Y, Z criteria for mm -hmm. to be able to be qualified for a retainer. For insurance, it's another set of qualities. They're finding out what which um, insurance products fit for that caller. Mm -hmm. So the quality calls have the highest and best um, highest and best use for the advertiser. So for the attorneys. It's mesothelioma oh, and you know everything's happening there, right? That's a that's a fifty thousand dollar you know type of an acquisition, right? Whereas um, uh, in other cases, um, let's say in Camp Lejeune, a you know twenty five hundred to five k acquisition, yeah. right? The, I mean, that's why legal is an ideal place because it it meets that minimum requirement for pay per call, right? Um, and you know, the budgeting and stuff like that. So quality calls meet specific criteria of the advertiser and the advertiser is really winning with that model. Hmm. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the Camp Lejeune one uh, hurts my heart being an old Marine myself. So, uh, I, I hate to see that, but, um, I get how profitable that was. And I think Mesothemiola was uh, the number one highest priced uh, pay-per-click on Google for like years, right? Yeah. I get offers all the time to run mesothelioma, you know, and they're like, oh, I'll pay you 25K. Da, da, da. I said, I run that on agency only. So there are certain campaigns that I'll only run a specific way, right? Yeah. Uh, based on, you know, the investment in it. So you're basically asking me to pay for your business. And as much of a generous person I am, like, you know, but I do, I am a professional. I do know how much it's going to cost to achieve your lead one, but I can't jump into your business and close sales for you. Hmm. Maybe that's a niche, uh, Dustin. Maybe it's where we take the, you know, from call to sale. Maybe that's where I should be going. <laughs> uh, pivot. Pivot with the company or happening live on affiliate nerd out. Yeah, let's uh, go. <laughs> uh, tying into like finding partners, I don't even know where to start really with the paper call scene. It seems like uh, most of the folks that would be super effective might be ghosts in con in comparison to like me finding content and like coupon sites. Uh, where do we find partners out there? Are we talking about partners that are affiliates specifically? Correct. Okay, so. Um, where do you find partners? Well, specifically you, you find great partners through Dustin, through <laughs> Ashtash, right? <laughs> Plug, right? But um, where do you find partners? I've been in this for uh, close to 20 years. Yeah. And um, I know I don't look like it, right? But um, <laughs> I've been in this for close to 20 years. But um, so I have trusted partners yeah. that, that I work with already. Finding partners, it's typically... They, when you run a solid campaign, the affiliates actually find you because it's oh. their their mission to go get the highest and best payout. So when you have a highly effective program, your affiliates actually seek you out. So I, I that must be nice. Um, <laughs> it's I just mean, my style, you know. There's everybody wants to meet me, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, highlighting your your program in the best kind of light is one of those staples of every affiliate program I run and like consult and audit. And uh, that's a, a great testimonial of like good partners are going to find you if your stats are like popping out at them. Yep. So then our stats are earnings per call or RPC. It depends on which side you're on. So revenue yep. per call or earnings per call. Um, when the revenue per call or earnings per call is at, you know, a great rate, you've got high interest um, from, you know, all partners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And speaking of uh, partners and like finding good partners, I'm going to thank our sponsor of the day, and that is Affy Stash. So if you're an affiliate manager and you want to save some hours during the week on recruiting affiliates, Affy Stash has got the solution for you. We're going to reduce your time spent 
finding that contact information. We have a new feature. It's called Lookalike Partners that'll find hundreds of similar profiles for any URL or social profile. And our customers are absolutely loving this feature. So sign up for a free 15 minute demo to see this feature in action and we'll show you real time results. And I'll even send you 20 high potential affiliate partners just for signing up and being there. Go to dustinhouse.com slash demo, sign up for it today. All right, and then getting back into it, um, just switching gears a little bit from what we were talking about earlier, the qualified versus non-qualified calls. Like in the campaigns, what should you be doing? Is, it, is this a, a both kind of thing? Like pay $5 for non-qual and 25 for qual? What, what's that look like? So there are campaigns where you, you can just flatten the rate and pay for all calls, right? Yeah. For not for um, non-qualified calls, the example being, uh, you get somebody looking for tires when you were targeting for insurance, right? So that would be a clear non-qualified call. And sometimes these things happen. Again, COVID happened where people's memories were affected. But a non-qualified call, if they it was it's absolutely clear um, that somebody is looking for tires and not insurance, we typically don't charge for those. And it, that's far and few between with our targeted campaigns. Uh, but the qualified versus non-qualified are duration. Hi, Matt. Uh, he, I just saw he, he jumped in. That was really nice. Thanks for, for coming out and, and watching. So um, the non-qualified calls also could be ghost calls, right? Where the agent picks up and nobody answers, right? So there could be some system errors that day. Um, and and that's just, it's, it's not qualified. Um, so... I hope that answers your question. Absolutely. Um, and you talked about having a, a great network working in this industry for for years and building up that Rolodex. That's that's in your back pocket, right? But for those that are just dipping in and like trying to find those new partners, is capping the number of calls that they're allowed to like bring in a good idea? Absolutely. So when you do bring on somebody that you haven't worked with yet. It's very important to um, vet the source fully. Capping the calls, uh, the amount of c paid calls per day is essential. Whenever you hear unlimited from an advertiser, it's a big red flag to us. They're saying, oh, you know, spend all your money on my campaign. You, you don't want to do that. You want to um, cap the daily cap, and it depends on which vertical, what that daily cap is at. You want to cap it at a specific set number um for that advertiser so you can check quality right right uh matt's saying hello uh you gotta keep on rocking um and when you are evaluating that kind of quality what are you looking for when you're analyzing this data so i've used um a lot of manual reporting um, okay. every single day to get in front of campaigns. So every day I'm checking for the durations on calls before I dive in on a QA and start listening to specific calls. I'm Ooh. looking at the duration. Uh, so if calls are lasting 10 minutes or more, there's high interest, right? So you're looking at engagement rates or duration of call. Okay. So when you analyze, you wanna look at the duration of the calls. Each vertical has a specific engagement rate at which they are either a sale or, you know, a conversion um, or not. So the um, the duration of the call is a direct reflection on whether it converted or not. So that's that's a big one. So also, um, who hung up the call uh, first? Right. Mm -hmm. Was it the call center or the the end user or was it the consumer? too much of, of a fluctuation on where the call dropped off is is a reason to go look at that campaign closer so you've got duration and then when and who dropped the call right whether it's like okay thank you have a nice day or the caller just dropped or the call center said nope we're not going to take that call so those are, are are good things to look at 
in addition uh, to those things, um, it is feedback with that advertiser. Mm -hmm. It is end of the month tomorrow, so um, I get it. Don't worry about time it. Time to you know to go to a conference and also do an interview, right? Um, but what we look for, so I don't have dogs barking. I just have yeah. <laughs> notifications going off. Um, but I look for those key components to, to make good decisions about the campaign and how it's going. Um, but highest and best use of my time is just talking to my advertiser okay. and saying, how is it going? Um, and most of the time, the best analyzation is they're like, how do you send more? Send me more. Oh. <laughs> right okay so that's, well that's that's, that's that's when you know it's an effective campaign if they're asking for more that's great um all right uh what about the future what do we see happening in in paper call world and anything futuristic that you you've got on the top of your head futuristic is going to be it's going to be contrary to what most people think right so okay. Um, somebody asked me a long time, 10 years ago, what's next in paper call. I said, it's going to be a bot army, you know, mm. is what I said, because that's what I've seen. It's everything's cyclical right now, the need for agents with common sense. So we're going to get more highly trained, actual real people. So I know everyone keeps on saying AI, they don't fit a lot of compliance standards. So AI is not actually as compliant as you think even with you know the consent terms, right? It's almost like uh, it's part of robocalls. And this is something that I, we that, and I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice, um, <laughs> but this is something that's highly discussed in our industry. AI is not it, and it may you know boost rates here or there, but it's like reducing the amount of keywords you have on Google. You might reduce your cost, but you're losing part of your audience. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a more, what I see for pay per call is more highly trained agents and people really taking an interest in their consumers and mapping out their flow mm -hmm. so that they have a, a um, what is it called? I wrote a note on it today. They have a defensible position on how they or a defendable position on how they um treat their customers they are going to become more thoughtful and more aware so the future is actually stronger awareness and not artificial intelligence it's it's real humans getting their attention in the right place that is the future of making things really happen Awesome. Uh, love that. And I, I hate the experience of AI. Um, when I get on a phone call and I'm talking and they like, I can hear the AI, like contemplating what to say and like coming up with a response. And the second I hear that I'm messing with them immediately and like asking if they're about, no, of course not. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Uh, I find it hilarious, but, um, not a good user experience in my my opinion. Like I've never bought anything from a call that I've I've got from a bot yet. So right, yeah. uh, no, people are going to be mapping out their digital campaigns more thoughtfully to be successful, right? And mm. and really really getting the consent in creative um, and powerful ways that will give them you know more meaningful data. So I'm really excited about the future for paper call as well as digital marketing, out of home, direct mm -hmm. mail. All of us work together. So, um, oh, I see a question come in. So, yeah, uh, one of our, our our good friends here, Elena. Uh, I've noticed that most paper call campaigns are direct, whether through big networks like CJ or private specialized paper call networks. Do you find that to be true? Yes. Um. So. Um, big call centers, if you owned a 250 seat call center, you would want specialized attention for those 250 seats. So if you have uh, insurance, for example, um, you're going to have, you know, somebody who can uh, reduce your liability, who can vet campaigns, you want a trusted partner. So that's why, you know, um, big brands trust, um, you know, people who have been in the space can 
limit their liability. And that's that's the, the big concern. Fully vet the traffic and make sure it's compliant um, because the advertiser is ultimately responsible for what they purchase mm. to their web pages, not the traffic source. And okay. so, you know, that when I say compliance is a big thing and the personal help is a big thing, that's that's coming down the pike for everybody. Um, the advertiser is just going to take more responsibility. So I, I hope that answered your your question, Elena. Yeah. Um, and I think she had a follow up. Do publishers also work in sub affiliate or sub networks on such campaigns trying to figure out this form of tracking? Yes. Yes, they do. Um, media is a team effort. There's not one person on the planet driving all the insurance calls. Mm -hmm. It's thousands of sources or it was hundreds of sources for a, a 500 seat center um, that I worked yeah. in house for. So, but it's, so yes, there's, there are sub affiliates that main affiliate uh, network. It's their responsibility to fully vet and protect the advertiser, you know, going all the way through the train, taking the co consumer to the advertiser site, every point of it is responsible. I take that very seriously. I love my advertisers and the people who work so hard every day to get the consumers. And so taking that active interest is, is really important to me. Okay, awesome. Really appreciate all these knowledge drops. And now it's time for you to defend your post very quickly here. I found something on your LinkedIn, but you pulled it from your TikTok. <laughs> magic explained in two minutes uh tell me about this story and like what happened to you here how do you explain uh, magic in two minutes how do i explain magic in two minutes um beauty is is when you find beauty within when you find your passions um it can make everything more beautiful and life worth living. Um, so m my magic is finding the beauty in the mundane, um, uh, whether it's artwork in the everyday. So the magic in my post was when somebody, <laughs> when somebody told me that they could take me seriously, uh, because I, I darkened my hair, you know, I made oh. it, um, I used to be a hundred percent blonde and I went to uh, brunette and they were joking. And okay. so we're, we're all sensitive human beings. So making magic was realizing that that person wasn't offending me. They yeah. really liked me and, uh, and I really love myself. So real magic is learning to love yourself and finding the magic in every day. Now I sound like oh, a Disney commercial. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. In a world of, of everybody getting offended for just about anything. Um, uh, you can't possibly offend me. Like it's, it is impossible. I can, I can twist anything, <laughs> any kind of rude rudeness. Like it's always never going to bother me. Like it's, uh, it's, it's one of my best attributes to just adjust and overcome on something like that. But, um, I'm glad you, uh, you find the humor and in, in life of like that and, and find that same balance that I do. I think yeah, that's why we get along. Yeah, it took a long time for me to learn that what comes out of somebody else has nothing to do with me. Um, so, you know, just yeah. working on myself has been the greatest gift that I've given to myself. That's that's awesome. And also, like, I uh, I only bust chops with the ones that I actually like. So if you're getting a comp, uh, comment like that from me, like, that means I like you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, how do we connect? How do you connect with me? You can yes, go to my we website at um, goreferralagent.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can connect me with me there. It's best to, to email uh, me or fill out a, a form on my webpage, www.goreferralagent.com or find me on LinkedIn. My full name is Alicia Gabrielle Aflalo. And I look forward to answering more questions and, and growing the paper call space in an effective way uh, for, for my advertisers and advertisers to come. Awesome. Get your paper call info from Alicia here. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate you you stopping the conference and uh, and coming on in and uh, 
you know, doing this with me. Uh, appreciate the info. Welcome. Sayonara from Nashville. No, wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all. All right. Take care, folks. We'll see you out there. Bye-bye.